Hi, beloved. This is Pastor Greg and my dear wife, Lori. And we Hi. just wanted to update you on a couple of things. Thought it was important and timely to be able to do so. Uh, first of all, we wanted to just say thanks again uh, for all of your uh, prayers, your love, your care in the midst of things that we've walked through in these last few months with Lori's mom and dad living here. And of course, uh, leading up to Lori's mom's death on the 27th of January and um, the graveside service we had this last Saturday. Uh, we just wanted to say thank you for your care. You wanted to say something. Hi. Yeah, we, we are so grateful for all of you and for the love that you've shown us over this time. And and uh, my mom and dad have been so blessed as well mm -hmm. by the love that you've expressed through through meals, through uh, bringing us fruits and vegetables and cards and flowers and um, loaves of bread, just all the different ways that you have blessed us was such a blessing to her as well. And so we're so grateful. And while the trials are hard, we want you to know that Christ has become more precious to us through this trial, and you've become more precious to us. Mm -hmm. And we love you, and we're just so grateful that we get to be a part of the body with you. So thank you. Yeah. Amen. There's so many blessings that we've been reflecting on uh, these last couple of weeks and just ways that God has worked, and we are um, deeply, deeply thankful. Uh, by the way, I should say it's Monday, February 8th as we're recording this, too. <laughs> I meant to mention that earlier. Uh, so anyway, so we wanted to say thank you and just uh, let you know that um, there's much cause for praise to God and how he's been providing. Uh, another thing that we want to update you on is, is something that's been developing in the last few weeks, and uh, that is that I found out a couple of weeks ago I have prostate cancer. And uh, I've been getting annual physicals for many years, and uh, the last couple of years my PSA levels have fluctuated a little bit. And then when I had a physical in December, and all the blood work that goes with that, uh, toward the end of December my PSA level was a bit more elevated. So uh, my doctor wanted me to see a urologist, and then uh, that was followed with a biopsy that I actually had on uh, uh, Monday, January 25th. So two weeks ago today is when I had the biopsy. And then a few days later, actually the day after Lori's mom died, is when I found out that I did indeed have prostate cancer. So uh, the doctor believes it's in the earliest, uh, reasonably earliest phases, which is good. Uh, it's stage one. And uh, what that means is that we now have to make a decision about uh, the treatment for it. And uh, in the, the stage that it's in, and I'm in the intermediate risk group with uh, the cancer, uh, there's really two different alternatives, either surgery to remove the prostate altogether or external radiation. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be doing some research and uh, talking with both the radiology doctor as well as the surgery doctor that uh, would take care of that and then make praying and making a decision. And uh, we have a number of different folks that uh, have had this in the past that we've interacted with. As most of you know, Gary had prostate cancer, Gary Francisco, a few years ago. And so he's been a great resource. And uh, so we, we're not lacking resources with regard to that. Uh, but we want you to know about it and so that you can be praying uh, for us and for our children as we walk through this and whatever the Lord uh, sees fit to do. Um, our hope is in Him, and yet we covet and need your prayers. I think often of what uh, Paul said to the Corinthians at the beginning of his second letter to them in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and I've reflected on this passage before uh, with you, uh, but he says in verse 8, We don't want you to be ignorant, brothers, of the affliction we experienced in Asia, for we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death, but that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. On him, we have set our hope that he will deliver us again. And Paul goes on to say, you also must help us by prayer so that many will give thanks on our behalf for the blessing granted us through the prayers of many. And so Paul wasn't ashamed to say, hey, I need your prayers, and I need your prayers to be faithful in the midst of things that God has called us to. And that's true for all of us. 
Um, from a human and from a scientific standpoint, we understand that, that prostate cancer is a very uh, common diagnosis for men. Uh, my own birth father had uh, prostate cancer some 20 years ago, and he's still alive. He's going to turn 94 in uh, March, and um, it's a very treatable cancer. Uh, so we're grateful for that, but we also understand our hope is in the Lord, and our hope is in Him and what He ordains and what He purposes through all of this. And so uh, we want you to be aware of it, and we'll kind of keep you aware of things as, as we move through things. Again, our most uh, immediate matter is um, prayerfully making a decision about the best treatment and what seems to be most appropriate, and so we would appreciate your prayers for that. And, and again, not just for Lori and I, but for our kids as, as we all walk through this together, um, that, that we would be sustained by God's grace and that we would bring glory to God. And I wanted to share with you another passage uh, that has really uh, just been driven home to Lori and I time and time again over these last few months. Uh, it's become that much more real in the hope and in the, in the promise that it conveys. And it's in Lamentations chapter 3, uh, verses 21 to 24, uh, when the writer says, But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, and His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. And of course, this is the passage that that great hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, which we sang yesterday morning at River City, uh, it's based upon this passage. And one of the refrains in that song that we have sung many, many times and reflected on many times uh, throughout this whole process is that God um, has given strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. And uh, we trust Him in that. And we need help daily in trusting Him because uh, as you know and as we know, there are challenges, trials, and difficulties uh, that we can face in all of this. So, uh, so that's the situation we want you to be aware of, and we deeply covet your prayers and your love and your concern, even as we are continually praying for you and for God's purposes, and, um, and we want you to be aware of that. And I want you to know also, just by way of schedule, uh, as you know, Tim has preached these last couple of Sundays, and he's scheduled, at least right now, to preach the next two Sundays as well. <laughs> And uh, actually, back in the fall, when we were looking at the preaching schedule moving into this year, uh, we had scheduled Tim to preach on the 7th and on the 14th and on the 21st. And so that was sort of set. And, and then, of course, he graciously preached um, on the 31st. And then the week before that, uh, our dear friend and, and brother Tony Arns preached. Uh, we'll be looking at the schedule, and, and once um, you know, we land on, on what kind of treatment I'm going to have and when that's going to take place and just what that's going to look like, uh, we'll obviously need to address how that's going to play out with the preaching schedule and all of that. Uh, but for the time being, I'm planning to be back on the pulpit on February, is it, is it the end of February, the 28th? I can't remember if there's a 28th or we go into March. 28th. Okay. <laughs> I know it's always weird in the month of February. So anyways, one way or another, we'll be uh, keeping you updated on that. But that's what's going on in the Stover home. And uh, again, as Lori said, we love you all so much. And we're so grateful for your love, your care, and your prayers. And uh, we'll continue to share in and seek the Lord together in the things that he's ordained. So thank you. And we'll talk to you again. Bye-bye. Thank you. We love you.